scripture that serves as the basis for this morning's devotion comes from Paul's first letter to the Christians in the Greek city of Corinth, chapter 15, called the Great Resurrection Chapter of the Bible. And we hear from verses 51 through 57. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May God's richest grace be to you from our Lord and Savior, our risen Lord and Savior, this Easter morning. In 2012, an online blog called the Huffington Post published an article titled, Defeating Death. Here's a quote from that article. The quest for immortality has not ended. Indeed, people who view death as oblivion are still trying hard to defeat it. Armed with modern science, they are making so much progress that Harvard-educated physicist Michio Kaku, that's the guy from the uh, TurboTax commercials, by the way, the nothing guy, uh, Michio Kaku has even questioned whether he is a member of the last generation to die. Kaku believes that a toddler alive today may be the first physically immortal human. As the article goes on, the researchers claim that between the ability to grow organs, the ability to control the human cell aging enzyme called telomere, and the ability to pluck genes from a certain kind of jellyfish called the immortal jellyfish, humans are on the brink of defeating death permanently. Seems a little crazy to me, but is it really anything new? Uh, since man was first created and the world came into existence, people have been searching for a way to achieve immortality. Everyone from kings to emperors to explorers have searched for fountains of youth, for magic elixirs, for the silver bullet vitamin or mineral that's going to completely ward off death. Even in modern times, between different types of surgery that have developed or modern medicine, We've found ways to slow the aging process and not just look young, but maybe start to stay young. So it's really nothing all that new. But how well have all these things worked? Fountain of youth, modern medicine. Not very great, not, not well, not well at all. Because despite all of our, our little victories over diseases and injuries, we still have no sword that can slay death. No armor that can protect us from its sting. Death has claimed every individual that's ever walked on this earth, with the exception of those two Old Testament men, Enoch and Elijah, who didn't die but were just taken up to heaven by God. But we're no exception. We inherited a sinful nature from our parents, who inherited a sinful nature from theirs, and so on and so on back to Adam and Eve. We sin daily, day in and day out, certainly in our actions, definitely in our speech, and even in our thoughts, which still count as sins. We toss God's divine will aside. We trample it underfoot. We make ourselves the first and the only priority. Because the wages of sin is death, we deserve to personally feel the sting of death when our time comes. There's no way that we can escape it. But that's not why we're here this morning. We're here this morning because despite the fact that death has won pretty much every contest against life, and despite the fact that death seems to be unstoppable, we're here this morning to celebrate the fact that death has finally met its match. 
We're here to celebrate the fact that the reigning king of kings has stepped into the ring in our place, and and with one swing from a nail-pierced fist, he's knocked death down to the mat and out of the fight permanently. Our risen Savior not only beat death, but he completely destroyed death and any power that death might have had. Christ has risen from the darkness of the grave and stepped out into the glorious dawn. Our Savior, who was pierced for our transgressions, now lives as the conqueror and victor over death. And what's more is that God gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. As sons and daughters of God, death can no longer harm us. Because Jesus knew the one and only way to strip death of its sting, of its power. Paul writes for us in verse 56, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Death's deadly sting is sin. Because whenever we sin, we break God's law. And that law then reveals our sin and condemns and convicts us because of that very same sin. Because we've broken God's law, because we haven't lived up to his standard of perfection, we do rightfully deserve to die. And there's only one way to undo this certain and fatal end to which we were all headed. That was to remove sin, to cancel its guilt by having someone else feel the sting of death in our place. That's exactly what we have just celebrated over the past week. That's exactly what our Lord did for us as he lived a perfect life, as he hung there on the cross, and now as he emerges from that dark tomb in victory. The key to all of this, though, is found there in verse 57. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Without our Savior, we would still be dead in our sins. But because he conquered the grave, God has declared him the victor over sin, that sin that held us captive to the grave. So now we are are free. Death does not need to scare us anymore. We don't run around with, with so many other people in our world searching for a way to defeat death because death has already been defeated. Christ has risen from the grave not just as a conqueror, but as a victor. And he gives us that same victory. Because he lives, we also will live. And on the last day, when the trumpet blasts declare our Lord's glorious return on the clouds, we get to see the full implications of that life as our mortal bodies are clothed with immortality just like his. And we get to join those countless crowds in the throne room of God singing the praises of the Lamb forever and ever. We have no fear of death because death has been swallowed up in victory. Amen. Please stand.